Welcome to 608 Fake Bakes. Let's make some donuts. Happy Sunday, everybody. It is me. I am going to do a quick tutorial on how to make donuts. Um, I've had a lot of requests for this, and I know that I've done making donuts with you guys on a couple different lives, um, you know, toward the end, but when people are asking, it's kind of hard to find that throughout all my videos. So I thought I would just do a quick tutorial just on making donuts. Uh, so I am using the Bose Fun Clay. This is roughly one pound. You can get it off of Amazon for about 14 bucks. Um, it's it's really nice clay. I actually prefer this off of, you know, of all of all the other foam clays. Um, Crystal over at Winston Blue is coming out with her brand of foam clay as well, which I'm super, super excited to try. Annie's Treasures also has a very nice foam clay, and as well as Play Cold 3. So you can check those out. Uh, but I, I really like the bows. I like this brown color when I'm doing gingerbread men or, um, you know, cones or any kind of bakery items like donuts. So that's what I'm using for this. You can use your Crayola Model Magic as well, um, which is also kind of a foam, it's like an air dry foam clay, um, but that tends to crack the bigger the projects you use. So my rule of thumb is if it's smaller than my hand, I can I will use Model Magic from Crayola um, or even Model Light. If it's anything bigger, then I'll use foam clay. So four donuts, depending upon the size you're gonna make them, you don't have to use this. You can use the Model Light or the Crayola um, Model Magic. Now the Model Light only comes in white, so you can definitely make your donuts, or anything as a matter of fact, using white clay, and then you can always paint it after it's dry too. But I'm gonna use this. So the first rule, no matter what clay you use, is you want to condition it. Conditioning just means you're you know, gonna kinda do this, you're just gonna work it. You're gonna pull it, you're gonna twist it, you're gonna knead it, you're just gonna get it. Um, well, I mean, it's very pliable, but you just want to work it. And what that does is it helps prevent cracking when it dries. Um, in the furniture world, with a lot of my artist friends, we know that if we use Dawes or Iron Orchid Design clay or um, paper clay, that kind of stuff, usually clay does tend to crack when it dries because it shrinks a little bit. And the same goes for foam clay and Model Magic and all of those as well. So just know that, you know, it, foam clay will kind of shrink a little bit but it also kind of puff up a little bit as well so you just kind of have to play with it and kind of gauge it to know you know where where you want it and, and where it's going to be so i'm going to work this i'm going to make two of them just so i can kind of show you guys and then i'll show you how i make my clay frosting as well so once you've really conditioned your clay i did do this a little bit before i started this video i'd say work it for you know at least a couple minutes <coughs> excuse me now we're just going to roll it into a ball. We want to get rid of all the little seams and cracks that may come, you know, when you're folding clay. Like there's a little seam right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Don't fret about those. Um, worst case scenario, you can always put that as the top of your donut where you're going to put your icing over to cover it. You can grab a little bit of water, dab it on your finger, and you can kind of smooth it out. It will make this slimy. Um, another tip too is if your project does crack, right, and you have a crack in it after it dries, don't worry, don't throw it away, don't do anything like that. What you can do is you can take a little bit of your clay and mix it up with some water, just mush it until it becomes almost like a, like a mud, like a thick kind of paste. You know, you can kind of work it. And then you're gonna take that, that in the art world, you know, when you work with clay, we call that slip. So what you can do is then you can take that mushy, wet clay, and you can take your finger or your paintbrush and you can kind of work it in the crack and fill that crack in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll these into two balls. If you're gonna make, you know, if you want them all the same size, I would definitely suggest rolling out your balls first, making sure they're all the same size because then you know you're gonna get relatively the same size of donut, right? So if I were to make one donut and then grab clay from another, once it's done, I'm gonna have trouble figuring out, did I use the same amount of clay? So I definitely recommend if you're gonna make these a mass or if you're gonna make you know, a baker's dozen or a half dozen, definitely just roll out your balls first, line them up and make sure they're all the same size. Now this is air dry clay, so I would not suggest doing that and then walking away for a half an hour to do a tour or change over laundry or something like that. Um, you know, if, you, if you're gonna do it, just sit and, and finish it. Okay, so I got my two balls, relatively the same size. So these are very, very easy. There's different ways to do these. Some people will roll um, 
and just do it. How about that? I'll just show you guys. So there's different options, right? So you can always roll your clay into a snake. connect the ends um, and then try to blend this as well as you can using water a little bit of water just kind of smooth over the edges um, but I never feel like that's uniform enough when I do it this way so I don't you can get donut molds even in your bakery section at like you know Hobby Lobby or even Walmart um, they do have donut molds you can you can find donut molds um, the thing with those two is that you're only going to get a one-sided donut right the top part's going to be kind of flat um, I have made salt dough donuts using an actual mini donut maker um, but those can come out kind of weird too <laughs> so for me personally just a personal preference this is the way I like to do my donuts okay so we got a ball this size ball and just gonna smush it. But anyway, just, just smush it. And then I'm gonna take my pinky. I have really fat Polish sausage fingers. Um, anybody who's on my lavender love page knows that I and my creative group, we kind of joke about that a lot. Um, but I'll just take my pinky, because it's rather round and plumpy. Just depending upon my size of donut. If I was doing a smaller donut, I would take like a, a pencil, a paintbrush and um, but you're just gonna want to go right through the middle but you can go all the way through if you want for my arm or not my ornaments but um just like embellishments sometimes I won't go all the way through I'll just make the hole in the top like if I'm gonna put it on a cutlery set or something I won't bother making this all perfect down here with a hole but these guys are gonna be ornaments so I've got my hole in there and now I'm going to take the palms of my hand and I'm just going to kind of roll it like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of push in toward the center a little bit, but it's also going to thicken the sides. And then we can push down the bottom. You know, and as we all know, donuts aren't completely perfect either. So it's going to be. Bumpy, but that's that's how I make my donuts. You can take your pencil if you want more of like the creases or paintbrush. You can definitely go in, you know, with a tool and kind of make those little indentations if you want. Um, I technically don't do that a whole lot. Technically wasn't the right word for what I was saying, but um, so there's my donut. Now you have two options for the bottom if you did go all the way through. Let me grab some water really quick. I do apologize. I always forget at least one thing when I do my videos. I'm just going to take a little bit of water and you can see where there's that crease. And what you can do is just take your finger with a little bit of water on it, give it a little bit of pressure and really push down on those creases. I personally don't go this route with most of my things because I can never get it right. And as I'm holding the donut, you can see I get imperfections. But that is an option. I mean, if you're more careful than I am, you can definitely do that. But in this case, I have my donut. So this top part looks perfect. That's great. So I'm actually going to put the frosting on the bottom portion and I'm going to cover up all that. So like I said, these are going to be ornaments. I'm going to do another one. Smoosh. If you do use a pencil, I'll just show you guys. Usually I use my finger, but use a pencil or paintbrush, and you're just going to kind of do one of these. Oh, did it go all the way through? Oh, just like the back. And again, my hands. Now I was kind of going through my clay, figuring out the colors I have. Usually, Mostly I'll order white clay um, and then I'll color it. So there's, if you get the Tismo clay off of Amazon, that's a really good foam clay too. However, it is hard to make your own colors out of it. So I would not recommend adding paint or a marker to that to change the color. Um, but this stuff you can. So here's my other donut. I'm going to leave this as the bottom. We're going to make this the top. So 
I'll show you guys how I make. I guess I'll just a little bit. It looks like a belly button. Just a little bit. Okay, got my donuts. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make my colored clay out of white. So again, I'm gonna grab my Bose foam clay. This is in white. I am excited for Crystal to come out with her colors. I think Annie's Treasures has 26 different colors, if I'm not mistaken, of foam clay. Um, they're $9.99, but they're for smaller bags than this. Um, Crystal, she's coming out with a blitz and blue brand, and her bags will be the same size on this lot, I believe. Um, and those are available to the public. I can't remember what price she said that they would be at, but um, relatively the same. So, let's see, what color do I need? I, I wanted more pink. That's what I wanted. So, again, I'm going to work this just for a couple seconds, and then I'm gonna add my paint. Um, for this, I'm just gonna add Pink Parfait from uh, Apple Barrel. If you do not like paint on your hands, I would suggest wearing gloves for this part. Just latex gloves, but people who have been following me for a couple years um, over my lavender and love page you know very, very well I'm usually covered with paint. Um, I never wear gloves. So I just poured it in a couple little spots. You do want to be careful, work it very, very slow. So where the paint's coming out, I'll stretch it a little bit and then I'll fold the clay over. So here you can see some paint coming out. I'm going to stretch that out, get some clay over. I mean, if you're very careful about this, you can get minimal paint on your hands, but um, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But basically, you're just going to work that in. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here. I'm making a color and I'm conditioning my clay at the same time. You can use markers as well. Um, if you just grab Crayola markers, just open up your clay, color on it. It'll it'll take a little bit more. Paint is a lot faster as far as achieving your, your color you want. And I do want a brighter pink, so I am going to add a little bit more. Stretch and tuck. Uh, but yeah, I have sat with my markers. And I mean, I think just to achieve like a decent yellow, I had to go over it quite a few times with the marker. So I just find that paint is a lot easier. <clears throat> but like I said, the Tismo, if you do have the Tismo foam clay, I would not recommend this to get a color. Um, I did add paint to the Tismo and what it did is it made it very, very hard rubbery. Like I could, it got to the point where I couldn't even stretch it. I could barely roll it out. Um, so I ended up wasting a lot of the clay. So just a heads up for you guys, if that's the clay you have, I would suggest just making whatever you're going to make and then paint it after it dries. Now, there are two ways to make your frosting. Um, okay, so there's a couple of different ways to make clay frosting. Um, I'll show you mine at the end. I'm going to show you a lot of fake bakers I watch. This is how they'll make it. So you want a mat, like a silicone mat or a wax paper, that kind of thing. Your wax paper will slide around, so tape it to your table. Um, otherwise, it's going to slide around. This is just a cutting board. It's not necessarily silicone. Um, but the key for it to not stick on this is to constantly lift it up as you're rolling it. And this is ooh, an acrylic rolling pen. You can find this at Walmart. We have a couple different sizes. I'm sure Hobby Lobby has them too. Um, so for my frosting, I want it kind of thin. I mean, you don't need a thick frosting. Unless that's the look you're going for. I like thinner, plus I don't use that much clay then that way. Okay, so a lot of fake bakers with the do. I'll make the circle, but they'll take usually an X-Acto knife. 
Um, I like a little razor blade, but I just have a knife. And then I'll cut. Um, the clay will stick together. So after you cut it, don't wait too long to separate it. I'll kind of do one of these numbers. And then we'll fold it over. Just like that. And then you have your frosting slat. And that's totally fine. I mean, I do that sometimes too. Um, but for my my donuts just to make i mean if you want a more whimsical that's definitely the way to go and then you would just fold down the edges right i take an easy route i guess you could say so what i'll do is i'll just kind of flatten it and then i'll make almost like a little flower and then i'll roll it out like that in the center either way is fine um you know if you use the exacto knife for the knife it's a more cleaner whimsical kind of look to it this is kind of like borderline whimsical and realistic so i made my hole and i'm just gonna line that up with my hole i'm actually gonna make it a little bit bigger yeah to be able to see a little bit of that brown underneath i'm gonna place it down just like that and I'm gonna fold down the sides. Now, when I fold down my sides, because this clay is still wet, it'll stick to each other. You don't have to worry about gluing it, right? If I made my donuts in advance, like this guy, if I was putting frosting on him, then I would use some glue, will do him too. So I got that down, okay? But then now, some areas I'm going to, make sure the edges are pushed down, number one, but I'm going to drag some of that frosting down even a little bit further. And I like fingerprints in mine. Not fingerprints, but like more indentations. Because it makes them like look a little more realistic. It really depends on personal preference and the look you're looking for. But I'm just gonna kind of drag down along some of these edges. Then I have my donut. Easy peasy. Now, if you want to use real frosting, I have shown you guys, maybe I'll make another tutorial. I didn't think ahead to that. Um, but you can also paint frosting on. You can use puff paint, um, like the Fabric 3D puff paint. You can get that at Hobby Lobby or even Dollar Tree has some colors too. Um, you can make your own, like we have on some of my lives where you use the clock and you mix it with Mod Podge, a little bit of Mod Podge, and then. Um, paint your paint color and then you can make like a like an actual like frosting um, and then you can just kind of put it on with either a paintbrush I tend to take the cloth mixture and I'll have it in a dish and I'll just dip my donuts and kind of do one of these let it drip and then bring it up so then that looks more realistic as well and definitely do that if people are interested I can make another video doing that but then there's that stew yellow Make sure to really clear that you're not using. I really didn't need this big bag, but um, make sure it's in an airtight container. Seal kind of big. Let's play the same thing. See, it gets kind of tough, so that's why you want to condition it. Um, so this is the same thing. This is the white foam clay from Bose, and I just added some yellow paint to it. And we're just going to go ahead and start working this. See how it gets a little more stretchy, and that's why you want to condition it, especially if you mix paint into it. It's not as pliable. So you just kind of want to work it and make it more, more pliable. Now, for sprinkles, you guys can, I mean, obviously, I don't recommend for free fakes using raw sprinkles. So you're going to attract bugs and all that fun stuff, and that just, you know. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't want critters all over my Christmas tree, right? <laughs> so 
So for sprinkles, you can order fake sprinkles on websites like Play Cold 3. You can order them off of funders on Etsy, which I would recommend because you're helping out a small business. Um, but I do order from both. You can actually even make your own as well. If you want little dot ones, it's going to be more time consuming, but you can just roll and play into tiny little dots like this. Don't let them touch, but you know, kind of make an area and let them sit out overnight and then you'll have some clay sprinkles. You can make bigger ones as well. Like that, you just make a ball. Do a little bit in the middle. Make it kind of look like a tic-tac. And then you got, you know, other little sprinkles. Um, if you have little cutters, you can definitely use those as well to make sprinkles. If you want to stick to the clay, clay thing here. This is good enough for the donut. Because this is on a small project, I'm not gonna keep conditioning it. If it was a bigger project, I'd keep working the clay. Yeah, so roughly, so what I do, what I just did there, sorry, I should explain. So I just kind of rolled this out and I'm eyeing it up compared to my donut. So. Flatten it out lightly. You guys want to use the smoother side on the top. Unless you're gonna take it with sprinkles, then it doesn't really matter. This side. We're actually going to put it on this donut. Now I think about it. <coughs> Excuse me. It came out of nowhere. So this donut I made a couple days ago. So when this foam clay dries, guys, it's still kind of squishy. I mean, you don't want to like whatever. It'll break, but it'll rip open. But it is still kind of squishy and it's super light, which makes it really nice. That's why we like to use foam clay. And for shipping, too. So because this is already fully dry, this wet clay will stick to it, but not for the long term. So you always want to apply some glue. Um, I'm just using this adhesive I got at the dollar store. Just going to go around here. And then on this clay too, I, the edges. Because if you have thin edges, what can happen is as they dry, they can curl up. So you want to make sure you really hit the edges well. I mean, you don't need to put on a thick amount. I actually put on too much. Then enough to hold it down. You can use tacky glue too. Um, I'm just gonna line that up on the hole and we'll push down. So yeah, that's gonna make it stick to the already dried. Just go a little more. So I'm just gonna push down. Use my palm because if you use your fingers, you get more indentations. I don't mind a few, but I don't want a lot. And then same thing. I'm just gonna push down. Edges, drag a little bit down. But I really want to make sure that those edges are adhered. So we'll just take a little bit of that right there. Pinky. So there we have a yellow one. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna go get my um, sprinkles and whatnot and then we'll finish this. So for you guys, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I am back. Um, so I have three donuts here. Now these two I made during this video, that's why these are the same size. Like I said, roll up the same size ball and you'll have the same size donut. This one was one that I had already pre-made, uh, but I did add the frosting on with you guys so I could show you just how you glue it on. So now we have our three donuts. Um, I decided not to use like the realistic looking fake sprinkles, um, but you definitely can use them. I used them on this one. So what I did is I just kind of covered this with some tacky glue and then I, I laid down my, my plastic um, sprinkles. So you can, even though it's kind of cartoony, whimsical looking, you can add 
the realistic sprinkles to it and it'll look just fine too. But for these, I think we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use some foam, blue foam balls that I found on Amazon. Um, usually you can get these foam little beads from the Dollar Tree as well. Um, but I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen them this multicolored at the Dollar Tree. I've gotten different bags of solid colors and I've mixed them, but I'm pretty sure this color arrangement I did order off of Amazon. If you're interested to know what bag this was, just let me know down in the comments and I can send you the link. I haven't mastered putting the links of all my products in the description yet, so I'm a busy lady. There's just no time, so if there's something that you want specific, you just let me know and I can definitely send it to you. So now I'm just going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to take some tacky glue. You can use Mod Podge for this too. Um, I just find that tacky glue sticks better. And it dries clear too, which is nice. Hi buddy. So I'm just going to paint the frosting. You can be meticulous about it too if you only want sprinkles in certain areas. Um, but this is how I roll. I'm a busy lady, so let's have it all well up on here. Now I don't put on, I mean, I don't make it thick, thick, but just enough for these foam beads to stick. Get that all on there. Just like that. Um, and people say too, don't use your brushes for glue. I, I've been doing art for many, many, many years. And I use Mod Podge and I use tacky glue and the whole nine. I just stick it into a dish full of water and I let it sit until I wash it out and then my brush is fine. So <coughs> I've even let them sit in there for a couple days and they're fine. So now I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle these foam beads. You can make go with the sparkly look with this it. If you want it completely covered, you can obviously just dip it right in there, but I want to find a little more random. I'm just going to gently And then once this is dry, I will go over it with like a glossy Mod Podge or MAC Mod Podge, depending upon what kind of look you're going for. Even though I am pressing it into the clay and the glue, I always put another sealant over it. You can even use the spray Mod Podge if you want. It makes it a little bit easier. But I will go over this with with the Mod Podge and that will just help make sure that these, all these little foam beads are completely secure. So. And then when I put on the Mod Podge, so after this dries and I put the Mod Podge on, then I will sprinkle some diamond dust. Like that's the point where I'd sprinkle like my diamond dust or my glitter because then after I Mod Podge it, it'll get down in all those little crevices and it'll fill that space. Just another option for you. There's the ornament. So this guy will be an ornament. Okay. Easy peasy. And then <clears throat> for this guy, I'll just show you how I do this really quick. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. People have lives, they have things that they need to get to. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my white clay. So for these, I'm just going to go ahead and do my clay sprinkles. And then I'm going to roll it sideways. Ends up looking like that. Now this clay is still wet. So I'm not going to worry about super gluing it. Okay. 
little ones. Yeah, we'll just finish it quick just so you guys can see. Put some yellow on there. But the fun thing with these is you guys can make them as whimsical or as realistic as you want to. Just all depends on the look you're going for. You can also make your donut bases any color you want. As you can see here, this one's white. Um, you can do pink donuts, you can do blue donuts. I've even got like some hot pink donuts somewhere. So if you want them, you know, a little bit shiny, then I would definitely add some gloss Mod Podge to it um, to finish it up. I always recommend it. I know some fake bakers don't seal their clay. Some projects they will, some projects they won't. I highly recommend it, um, only because as a furniture artist and an artist doing other things as well, I mean, if these are sitting around, they're going to collect dust and I mean, you definitely don't want to take a wet rag to these um, or anything like that. I, I just, I highly recommend sealing it just as you would furniture or a canvas. Um, and then that way you can easily wipe them off. You know, I mean, this is clay, even though it, when it dries, it's still whatever. I mean, stuff can still get, I know what I'm trying to say and I can't say it. They're easier to clean if you just seal them. But there, we'll just go with that. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. Okay. Easy peasy. So there's that one. And then for frosting stripes. You can take a little, oh, they're like little circular. Melinda works a lot with polymer clay. Um, if you guys would, hop over to Dragonfly Creations here on Facebook. She does a lot of polymer clay um, and painting, and she's just brilliant. Um, but anyway, she gave me these. These are little cutters. So you can cut in the polymer clay or regular clay um, different size circles. So you can use them to make polka dot sprinkles as well, all different sizes. Look at how tiny they get. Um, this would be, I noticed when I dipped them in clay, or when I put them in clay, they get kind of stuck in there. So I just put it in my mouth and blow, <laughs> it would pop out. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the super small ones though for the foam clay. Um, definitely for polymer clay, that's totally fine, but I wouldn't recommend, recommend it for foam clay. But that's how I did my little dot sprinkles. In case you were wondering, to get them like perfectly Around. Um, but this guy, I think we're going to go ahead and we are going to do almost like a drizzle. Um, again, you guys can definitely make the concoction I showed you with the Mod Podge, the clock, and whatever paint color, whatever color frosting you want. And you can just do drizzle on this or like the puff paints. But if you want it, I'm kind of one of those people where like this is clay, so I kind of want to keep it all clay. Um, at least for these anyway. So I'm just going to roll out a teeny tiny snake. I'm not worried about it being completely uniform and all perfect. Um, because this is just going to be drizzle. So just start at one end of your frosting. As you go again, this pink clay is still wet, um, so this will stick just fine. I won't need to use glue now. If I just left this donut and it was completely dry, and then I'm adding this drizzle, then I would just take a paintbrush and just paint on the donut kind of where I want my drizzle to go, and then I would just follow that glue line with my clay and then just sort of tap it down so that it sticks.
same thing right here, just pinch it and pull. And then He's having a wonderful Sunday. It's gorgeous out here. It's in the 80s. We actually opened up all the windows and turned off the air. So hopefully you can get outside. I've got some hens and chicks, chicks and hens, whatever. They were plant and an aloe. Um, they were all indoors over the winter, so now I can... That's my plan for the rest of the day and laundry. So, my laundry. <laughs> okay, so there's that. My up from there. And then I think I'm gonna go over this one, the pink anyway, with some diamond dust. And we'll get my eye hooks and I'll show you guys how I make ornaments out of them. So diamond dust is, if you guys haven't worked with it, it's actually crushed glass. Um, I don't know, as some people have complained of getting shards like in their hands and stuff, just be careful with it. I never have had an issue with it. I use my hands all the time to apply it and sprinkle it and press it down, um, and I've never had an issue. Just, I mean, I am a little careful. I don't put a lot of pressure on it when I push on it. but. Um, just keep in mind it is crushed glass. So it's in here in a second. But because it is that, it's not glitter, like a fine glitter. I mean, I could put Mod Podge on here and the glitter would stick just fine. Um, it'll actually even stick to the wet clay without an adhesive, but um, in time it will schluff off. So I always make sure that I adhere. Just do that for now. So this is diamond dust. You can get this off at Amazon. Um, I can't think, I buy it so often, you'd think I know how much it was, but I, I, I can't tell you. It looks just like that. It's super, super sparkly. Let me grab. I mean, like, I'm just loosening my fingers. I'm not, like, pressing my fingers together. I think that if I did press my fingers together, yeah, maybe I would get some little shards of glass stuck in there. So um, I'm just very lightly moving my fingers back and forth. I'm not pushing on the glass. But I use this stuff a lot. Less correctly, that makes it. Love this stuff. I go through it really, really fast, too. Um, and it's great for big bakes as well if you want the really shiny kind of look. I'm going to do a video for you guys too on making cotton candy. I know there's a bunch out there, but we'll be using um, some of this as well on that, just so you can see how sparkly I'm making.
the main deck. Just let it drizzle real quick. Okay, so I will be back and then I will show you very quickly how I make these into ornaments. Okay, I'm back. So, last part, I'm going to show you guys how I make these for ornaments. Um, again, just to touch on the uh, diamond dust. Like I said, it is small little crushed up pieces of glass. So definitely if you are selling these with diamond dust on them, let your customer know. Um, that way little kids aren't handling it and stuff. Like I said, I mean, I've had no issue touching stuff or whatever, but I mean, if a kid goes to grab it, they might get a little short. So just be cautious. You can always go on the safe side too and just use glitter. That will work just fine. Um, so for my ornaments, depending upon the ornaments, if they're really deep, if they're deeper ornaments, like my little popcorns here, you can definitely use, um, I use cotter pens. You can just buy these at your local hardware store. I bought a kit that has a bunch of different sizes. Um, so a lot of times I will use these in some of my fake bakes, um, you know, as ornaments because it does go down so deep and you know that there's going to be a good hold. Um, for these smaller, like these smaller ones that I did, I just use these little, um, little screw eyes. You can also buy these at your local dollar or dollar store, uh, hardware store. So those two are generally what I use for all of my fake bake ornaments. Um, again, depending upon the depth of them, because these have holes in the center. So some of these I will use the eyelets for, like these smaller guys here. And then the bigger guys I'll use the cotter pins. So. This guy, this clay is still wet. Let's do one that's dry. This one's dry. So this one I made a few days ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of look at it and figure out which area would look better as the top. I'm going to go right here. And then go ahead and take your either eye screw or your cutter pen and just make a hole. Just push it right down it, and that's the beauty of foam clay. And then you're going to... I kind of wiggle it like this just a little bit and then I pull it out and then I will take super glue. Um, I know some people use hot glue, some people use tacky glue. I prefer to use super glue. Um, it'll just hold a lot better. So I'm just going to kind of, I squeezed out way too much there. But basically I'm just going to run this cotter pen across that way too much on there. Redo. We'll make it work. Well, let's take a little bit off. I think I have a towel sit next to me. Okay. So a little bit of super glue on there. And I'm just going to stick it right back in the hole. And you can take your finger. I would suggest a Q-tip because it's super glue, but uh, of course I don't have one sitting here. And I'll just go around. Clear it off, and then there you go. Now you'll have your ornament, and then you can thread through whatever string or ribbon you want on there. So for these little guys, kind of the same thing. Just buy my donut. I think I want that to be the top. I do like to screw them in. You could just push them in. I like to screw them in just because then it has like the internal bridges, which will just help with that added security. Screw that in, screw it back out. Again, super glue, some dripped out here on my thing. So I'll just use that. Um, with the cotter pins too, if you don't push them in as far and you have more sticking up, um, it just kind of gives you the opportunity to maybe put like a little bow on there or something too as well. So if you wanted to donate, you stuck in your cotter pin, 
and you want to leave more of that cotter pin exposed to put a cute little bow up there, you can definitely do that as well. So lots of different options. But yeah, so that's how I make most of my donuts. I'm sure I'll come up with other inventive ways to make them as well that I'll share with you along the way. Um, but again, I mean, you can make them realistic. This is the frosting I used with the pack of Mod Podge and um, paint. It's a little more realistic. And then I used my cake donut. You can add just tons of embellishments. These are little cellophane tubes that I got just from the Dollar Tree, the gold. I got them in almost every single color. This one is just same thing, the caulk. So you can see the difference, I mean, between a clay frosting and then like an actual caulk Mod Podge and paint. So depending upon the look you're going for. And then this is just confetti sprinkles from Michael's. Um, and then the rest I just made with clay. So yeah. lots of fun ideas, you guys. So hopefully this helps. Um, as I said, I know a lot of people wanted to know how to make donuts. I kind of elaborated and went through the entire process. So. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you do, I'll make sure I get back to you. If you want any links to any of the stuff that I used, definitely let me know. Um, and I'll get back to you. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, and I will see you soon. Bye.